Hey, it's Mario here and in this video we're going to go into what is the right diet for you. So how can you personalize your diet approach based on your psychology, based on your behaviors and habits and how you respond to a diet to stick to it, right? So that's the big deal here. I mean, as the old saying says, the best diet is the one you can stick to. And I completely agree with that. And despite the fact that we know the basics, you know, be in the caloric deficit, get a sufficient amount of protein, divide your fats and carbs based on your personal preference, make sure that the most of the food is coming from minimally processed sources and getting your vegetables, getting your fruits in every single day, making sure that there's sufficient water intake, some resistance training on top of that to preserve lean body mass, build more lean body mass, and getting sleep handled I mean, those are the basics. Getting eight plus hours of sleep will make sure that that caloric deficit is more effective to make sure that the most of the weight that you're dropping is gonna come from fat and not from muscle. So those are, as I said, basics, you know, fundamentals. Everybody should be familiar with that by now. But there are certain things that we can customize because there's many different dietary approaches out there. So we wanna see, well, which one could work the best. And um, I actually came across a very interesting show uh, done by BBC where they took a bunch of obesity experts from uh, Oxford and, and Cambridge and they basically looked at what are some of the types of people and uh, based on how they fail their diet, so they identified three types of uh, dieters and then they want to customize the diet based on them. I find it very, very interesting, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So the three types they had in this little experiment, the number one was feasters. So they defined these people as people who basically can't stop eating once they start eating and they base that on some form of, uh, they say genetically that these people basically have their gut hormones a little bit disrupted so it takes longer for them to realize that they're full. So these are the types of people, I mean, I, I kind of identify with that kind of a person because I'm, I'm going to be eating, if there's a lot of food in front of me, I'm just going to be eating food. I mean, I'm just going to eat until I, I pass out basically. If I'm on a diet, if I'm really, really hungry. I'm uh, not very good with signaling, so I have to really slow down how I eat and really to give those gut hormones a chance to actually reach my brain before I really stuff myself with thousands of calories. So they identified feasters here, a very, very interesting category. You might already been identified a little bit. Oh yeah, I can, I can, feel, I can resonate with that. Um, the second category they said um, was the people who are constant cravers. So these people are uh, basically nonstop looking for food. So they're not able to break out of the habit of constantly craving junky food or calories, calorie spikes. So with these people, it feels like, I mean, at least from what I've seen in the study, that they've uh, identified that these people feel like they don't have enough fat. So their bodies basically, uh, they're signaling between how much body fat you carry and kind of that set settling point that you have in your uh, brain, your hormones is kind of corrupt. So the body doesn't know, the brain doesn't know that the body has plenty of fat. So it's always seeking more and more calories. So this can be disrupted, of course. I mean, lack of exercise, obesity, and all these other things can influence these factors. Uh, eating highly processed palatable foods, of course, doesn't help. And with these constant cravers, um, I mean, what they've used in the experiment to actually help them out was a form of intermittent fasting. So I think that intermittent fasting is really a fasting tool to combat these cravings. If you're someone who is constantly fighting with certain cravings, intermittent fasting might be the solution for you because and then you have the eating window, stick to the eating window, the eating window would be eight hours, let's say if you're doing that eight hours plus 16 hours fast, and it will actually help you regulate uh, your eating habits a little bit more. And I think intermittent fasting is an extremely useful tool because it really gets you uh, to connect back to your hunger signal. So you're gonna actually eat when you're hungry and you're gonna eat bigger meals as well. So it does help with these cravings. And in general, even if you do have certain cravings and snacks between the meals, it's still gonna be within that eight hour window. So it's gonna allow you for the rest of the day at least to have a break from that and to teach you a little bit of balance. So super, super interesting here, right? So we covered uh, feasters, we covered uh, the uh, constant cravers. And the third final category they identified in this experiment was emotional eaters. So people who basically have a, have a stress response when they're anxious and their stress response is to go for food. And of course, this is, uh, I think, Every one of us, of course, if we've been in a caloric deficit for a very, very long time, can definitely identify with this because we get so food obsessed. I mean, if you've ever been dieting down to about 10%, 8%, 6% body fat, 
I mean, everything around is just about food. And I remember that uh, Minnesota starvation experiment back when I did in the early 20th century when the people basically starved. Uh, everybody was more and more interested in cookbooks, reading about food, because they were starving them for six months. So generally, when we lack something as human beings, we put more value on that. So it, it is really a thing that you might identify with this uh, that basically leads to binges as a lot of people just can't deal with the stress. They, they don't have any other ways to deal with stress aside from overeating. And in this category, what they've done in the uh, experiment, they actually connected people with support groups and coaches. And uh, by giving them some emotional support, people would have been able to deal with these problems a lot more without relying to food. And I would like to add on top of that, I mean, if you identify yourself as an quote unquote emotional eater, it's extremely helpful to, of course, have a coach, but also to incorporate things like meditation, things like mindfulness in your diet, because um, this is not just in terms of diet, of course, but in general, your stress response uh, is deeply regulated by how your um, how you're fatigued, how you're uh, generally being able to be present in the moment, being grounded, and uh, I see that. This happens with me a lot if I'm on a caloric deficit, plus if I'm very, very stressful, if I'm doing a lot of things at once, I'm super anxious. You know, anything can just get me off track. I'm not as grounded as usual. And I found adding meditation, things like keeping a gratitude journal, things like uh, even tracking my food and being able to really look at it more logically rather than getting into that emotional mindset. It really, really helps me stick with that diet. Although, I, I mean, I wouldn't identify myself so much with the emotional eaters because I tend to control and master my emotions uh, better than, uh, at least better than before, but it is coming from years and years of training, of meditation, of really incorporating these habits into my life. So I think this would be very, very helpful. So the three categories they have identified, I think it's uh, some interesting uh, way of looking at things. So the first category with the feasters, you wanna basically slow down eating. If you find yourself that you can't, um, you can't basically stop, you eat, too much in one single sitting. So you wanna slow down eating, you wanna add a lot of fiber, you wanna add a lot of food volume that will kinda of fill you up fast. So a lot of vegetables, a lot of uh, legumes, a lot of fruits as well because this is a kind of a low calorie density type of trick that where you can just eat a lot of volume and makes you feel fuller so you get stuffed faster with that meal. And as I said, generally you wanna eat a little bit slower. A lot of protein helps as well with the feasters uh, type of uh, quote unquote uh, behavior and or dietary approach. The second one, as I said, constant cravers, very, very helpful to in incorporate some form of intermittent fasting, as well as environmental design, which would be one of the things that I, you guys heard me say many, many different times. So this would apply for all three categories, especially for constant cravers, is that environmental design is removing all the triggers from your environment that are actually inducing those cravings. So if you are craving something, let's say, uh, you would have to eat out to get it. You know, you'd have to actually move to get it. So you're gonna offset some of those extra calories as well as, I mean, it's typically a little bit harder to order like a whole tub of ice cream if you're eating out in a restaurant. You're gonna get maybe one serving or at best two servings, but you're not gonna, just gonna go all out. You know, at least not in a restaurant in front of people. <laughs> unless you just go for that or it's just your whole crew is like that, which can be a big issue. Uh, so um, the final category I said, emotional leaders, get a support group, join Facebook groups, connect with other people, join with friends, uh, use apps or websites that you can actually bet and connect with other people to help you stick with the diet and they will give you emotional support as well as seek, seek a coach, incorporate mindfulness meditation, Super, super helpful. Uh, and that would be it for the three categories. I mean, there's many other different ways of uh, looking at dieting. I was talking about abstainers and moderators in my previous videos, which I'm gonna link in the description below for you guys. And aside from that, let me know in the comments below which one of these three categories would you identify yourself with and how would you uh, kind of give yourself advice if you had to give someone else advice to battle with the same situation. So let me know in the comments below. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below, support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.